In this chapter, we're looking at motion graphs. There's distance time graphs, there's velocity time graphs, and there's acceleration time graphs. Distance time graphs. If I have a person that moves at a constant velocity, then that could look like this. So this would be a constant speed. Then let's say that person takes breaks, sits down on a bench and has a sandwich. So here we call this stationary and let's say the person gets chased away by a dog. So now the person actually needs to accelerate, so it needs to speed up. It starts off at a speed of zero and then gets faster and faster and faster and so the speed increases. What we see here is that the gradient, the steepness of my line increases and that shows me that the person actually covers more ground per second. You might wonder what it would look like if the person then slowed down. The dog is now far enough away, it hasn't caught the person and the person keeps on running at a constant speed for some time and then slows down then just stops. So here at the end it all levels out and my distance now stays constant. This section here is deceleration or slowing down and the first bit here would be acceleration, so speeding up. How could you find what the speed is from such a distance time graph? Well, the speed in each of these situations can be found from the gradient. So if I say this person here is actually moving, um, say this would be five meters and the time it has taken would be two seconds. It's not drawn absolutely correct, but each of these two seconds should be um, of an equal distance. Now, if I want to find that speed that I have here, uh, we said speed is distance divided by time. And what I can do here is take this distance, so in this first two seconds, the distance covered would be five meters if my distance here was in meters and say my time was in seconds and divided by this section here which would be two seconds. So I would get here five divided by two and that makes 2.5 meters per second. Now it might be that I actually want to know what is my average speed over this entire stretch of time, of these eight seconds and say this overall distance would actually be 40 meters. Then my average speed would be V average equals, again, my total distance divided my, by my total time, and I could write D tot divided by time tot to show that it's the total distance. So it would be 40 divided by 8, 5 meters per second. So it has turned out my average speed happens to be twice as fast as my speed in the first two seconds of this person moving. Here, if I want to see why is it actually accelerating, if I've forgotten that a line that curves up is an accelerating line, then I can look at the different sections of time for different, um, well, just taking the same sort of slice of time. And you see here, that where it accelerates, the amount of distance, the, so this bit here, in every um, of these time units, increases. So that means it actually gets faster. It makes more distance within the same amount of time. So more distance gets covered here in each of these sections. When it slows down, it does exactly the opposite. So it starts off at quite a large amount of time, in this um, quite a large amount of distance in this time and then it actually becomes smaller and smaller. So here less and less distance is covered in that same amount of time so that means it actually slows down. When you deal with velocity time graphs, acceleration time graphs and distance time graphs it is very easy to confuse the different graphs so this needs a little bit of practice. If I'm talking about the similar motion again, I would now say 
the person moving at a constant speed. So the speed would now be going down to zero for the next two seconds. Then we said the person was accelerating from zero to a higher speed. We don't know exactly what the speed was, but it was certainly a lot higher than it, what it was before. So acceleration would look like this. I could just draw a straight line and then the person was continuing for a little bit at a constant speed and then slowing down again to being stationary to rest. And so when I reach my eight seconds here, this is what it would look like. And this was about six seconds. So here I see in the first section constant velocity, so the same value throughout. Then when it's stationary, I get a velocity of zero. When it accelerates, I have a straight line up for uniform acceleration. That means accelerating at the same rate, constant velocity, and then again slowing down, decelerating, sometimes also referred to as retardation. What can you do with a, a speed time graph or a velocity time graph? Well, there are two things that are important here. As we saw in the distance time graph, the gradient of the distance time graph gave us the speed. The steepness of the line stood for the speed. Here, the steepness of the line tells us something about the acceleration. So if my person accelerates from um, a time of four, meters, uh, four seconds, at zero meters per second to a speed, let's say, of 10 meters per second in a time of, let's say, this would be five. You see, I'm not drawing this exactly to scale, which you should if you were in an exam. Um, then you would actually get an acceleration of v minus u over t. v would here be 10 u would be zero and the time taken would just be one second. So this would be 10 meters per second squared. And uh, in the same manner, I can actually calculate the deceleration. Let's say the deceleration here would go from six up to eight. Then final speed would be zero and my initial speed would in this case be my 10. And the time it took here would be two seconds, so this would make five minus five meters per second squared. And this is my deceleration of five meters per second squared, or my acceleration of minus five meters per second squared. This is one thing that I can find out from this graph. The other thing that I can find out from this graph is the area under the graph. Now, if you remember the formula that we looked at earlier, we said the distance covered is the velocity times time. If my velocity is constant, that is very easy. My velocity times time is just 2.5 times the time, in this case, two seconds. So this gives me a distance of five meters. If I have a different shape, I can just go with the area under the graph. If you look at this first example here, the 2.5 times the 2 gives me exactly this area here under the graph. So I can use this trick and look, for example, at this section of the graph and say, how far does he actually get in this section where the person accelerates? Well, this is a triangle. So if I want to know what the area is here, I can say, well, the area of a triangle is one half times the base times the height. So in this case, it is one half times the base would be one second, and the height in this case would be 10 seconds. So that makes five meters covered in this, in this triangle. So then I could go on and say, well, what is the overall distance covered here? Well, in this second second, um, second in this uh, section here, I can say, well, it is exactly one second here times 10. So the distance would be one times 10, that makes 10 meters. And the area here in this section would be, again, a triangle, one half times V times 
the height and that would make in this case one half times the base would be two seconds times the ten and that makes of course one half times two concerts out so I get ten meters covered in this last section. My total dip plus five meters plus ten meters plus another ten meters. So that makes overall thirty meters that I've covered in this graph. If we talk again about the same person moving, we said constant velocity at the beginning. Constant velocity means that the actual speed that the person is moving at would be zero. So I could Note that down here, and this is what the line would look like up to two seconds. Then we said the person was stationary, so I continue to be an acceleration of zero because it's not moving at all. Then it is accelerating. If we just go back, we noted that the acceleration was 10 meters per second squared. So if I put my 10 meters per second squared here, then all of a sudden I have an acceleration of 10 meters per second for this time of one second. So here would be five seconds. Then after that, I had again a constant velocity for one second and then it decelerated. It slowed down at a rate of five meters per second. So now I need to do something to my graph. I need to change my graph a bit and I need to go into the negative. And I need to have minus five here. So this is what I'm getting. Minus 5 is the value. This should be a straight line. And minus 5 up until 8 seconds. That is where the person stopped. Now let's compare these different graphs again. If I say I have constant speed would look like this. In my distance time graph, in my velocity time graph, I would get a horizontal straight line. In my acceleration time graph, I would get zero acceleration. Then I want to just be accelerating here. If I accelerate, increase my speed, then I increase the steepness of my line. If I do that, then my line curves up in my distance time graph. In my velocity time graph, it would just go straight up. That means I also just get a horizontal straight line for this value. Now, after this, I want my object to slow down and then to stop. So, now my object slows down and then stops for the rest. So, if it slows down, that means in my velocity time graph, I actually get um, a decrease in the speed. Slowing down means negative acceleration and negative acceleration, let's say it's exactly the same value, the steepness is here um, compare very well and then when it's stationary my acceleration time graph is zero and for my velocity time graph I should have actually gone down a little bit further and then it will be zero. If I have a velocity time graph and I want to find the area under the graph, the area under the graph, this, will actually give me the velocity, the change in velocity in this um, section. So I could do, for example, if this was one second and this was like 20 meters per second squared, then I could say, the change in velocity in this section would be 20 times 1 and that would be 20 meters per second. So that's my change in velocity. That means here I could have 10 and I would have 30 here because the change in velocity is um, exactly 20 as I just calculated. The gradient of the acceleration time graph doesn't stand for anything. The in the velocity time graph, the area under my graph again stands for distance covered and the gradient in this section would be the acceleration that I have. And in my distance time graph, the gradient would be speed. Uh, if you have velocity, it is nothing else but speed in a given direction. I hope you have understood this. If you have any questions, then don't hesitate to comment or email me. Thank you.